OpenAI messed up their launch of O1, and I want to talk about it because I think we need to set the record straight on what O1 is, on what O1 Pro is, and on where they're going with their newest release, which was today, called Reinforcement Fine Tuning. So we're going to get to all three of those and unpack that. O1 is the model they have been teasing for months. They should have just released that yesterday. That would have been big enough news on its own. Just release O1. Tell people very clearly that O1 goes in plus and team plans and then get out. That is the correct launch for the day. And the reason why is because then people would know where to find the model you are launching. Most of the people I know who are not obsessive industry watchers are asking me and saying, Nate, why do I have to pay $200 for O1? Well, you don't. But OpenAI confused everyone by also dropping a second surprise new model yesterday at the same time as this much ballyhooed model O1. They called it O1 Pro, which is even more confusing because now they're both named O1. Wait, which one do you mean? And then they deleted O1 Preview without telling anybody. Now, it's fine to delete O1 Preview and just put in O1. I think that would have made sense. But adding two new O1s is extremely confusing. So O1 Pro costs $200. And everyone I know who knows that there is a difference, which is already sort of a small segment of the population, is asking, why does it matter? Because if you look at the benchmarking test papers, and I was up late last night doing that, it does not look like a very big jump over O1. But it feels like a big jump over O1 for the right kind of task. And that is what OpenAI has done a poor job calling out. And I think they've done a poor job calling that out over 4.0 as well, because most of the folks on my TikTok in the comments are saying, why do I go to O1? I tried O1. I found it in my plus plan. It doesn't seem that much different. I will tell you, it doesn't seem different if you are using it for the same easy tasks. If you're using it for more complex tasks, it's an absolute life changer. I'll give you an example. I fed O1, 4O, and Claude Sonnet 3.5, an 1,800-word essay in one prompt. And I gave it the exact same to the word instructions. I said, read the essay, come back to me with a critique to make it better, and that critique must fit inside an iPhone screen. One screen capture size. I did not give it the size of the iPhone, I, none of that. Just fit it inside an iPhone screen. Well, only one model could do it. O1 could do it. That's it. All the others failed miserably. I asked O1 Mini. I asked 4.0. I asked Claude Sonnet 3.5. All of them were way too wordy and had critiques that just stretched on and on and on. And it was difficult to make sense of. And it wasn't that they were wrong. Like Sonnet 3.5 had good points. 4.0 was okay. But when I read the succinct inside one iPhone size response from O1, I felt like I was talking to a senior stakeholder with 15 years of experience in the industry. I was shocked. It is incredible. But if I had asked it to do a really simple prompt, like say, hey, help me brainstorm for a meeting, here's three bullets, would it have really done a much better job than 4.0? Probably not in a measurable way. Like, probably a little bit better. The tone would have been better, subtly better. That's not what it's for. The models that we are developing are solving harder tasks than most of us have to solve. And so you need to recognize in your work what model you really need. If you are just doing day-to-day -day work, 4.0 or Sonnet 3.5 is probably as much power as you need. If you are deliberately solving complex problems and you want a one-shot response and you're willing to write a precise prompt, O1 is incredible. And O1 Pro is even better, but for an even smaller range of use cases. I saw a demo on O1 Pro today where they gave O1 Pro and O1 and 4.0 and some others the same prompt, clone the Coinbase front page. And only O1 Pro was able to produce a high-quality, production-ready 
piece of code that was designed gorgeously and perfectly functional with no bugs in one response. Everybody else was way off base by comparison. So O1 Pro, I mean, if O1 is a BMW, O1 Pro is a Ferrari. But you can only put a Ferrari on a small percentage of the roads without banging it up. And so what I'm encouraging you to do is what OpenAI's marketing team should have done in the first place, which is dig in and understand these models. And if you want to learn more about the models and how you leverage them for workflows, I am doing a free lightning lesson. I will put the link in the description. You can sign up for it. It's on December 19th. I think it's, th these are incredible models. I don't want to take away from the technical achievement of OpenAI here just because they dropped the marketing. These are amazing. And I want people to understand what they can do and how to use them to to drive workflows and multiply their value in 2025. So if that if that, all, that sounds interesting to you, have a Maven lesson. You can learn live from me, 30 minutes. It'll be fun, December 19th. And before we go, I want to call out that there is a connection between the pro plan and the reinforcement fine tuning that we got today. Because the pro plan is aimed at scientists and so is reinforcement fine tuning. Reinforcement fine tuning is aimed at high value enterprise researchers who want to dig in a ton on specific highly technical problems. Again, this is a Ferrari of a technique. It is not for everybody. You do not need it on average. There's a reason they put it on a wait list. That's what it's about. And I think we're going to get more and more like heavy duty models that offer incredible value, but only for very specific use cases. All right. Cheers.